Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 2 Lore Through. Um, we are going to go into the second DLC, the crown of the old Iron King, I assume. Um, and um, let's read stuff before we go in. So we have these again. Forbidden is the path to the ancient king's domain. With water dry and path mist, woeful temp temptation is dismissed. In the tower of the old Iron King resides a child of dark. Another one. Trespassers will face adversity befitting a monarch. So yeah, it seems like there's a child of dark in all these stories. And that's how Manus, like, played his card, <laughs> in a sense. Oh, interesting. All of the DLC have the same door. Um, so, here's where the multiplayer sections are. Uh, I don't know if there's any text in this room. I feel like there is text in one of these. Uh, but anyway, that you know, all the four of these stories, one being the main game, the whole, you know, is just about kings that acquired power and the shards of Manus coming to um, kind of corrupt the kings and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. Maybe these represent the three DLCs. So it could be like a ball, then, I don't know, Helium Lois, and then the, the Sunken King, maybe? I don't know. Possibly. Well, you can fall off this whole time. There is one item I do not want to get here. So once again, in great From Software fashion, they do a great job at showing you everything that you're going to be doing, uh, you know, whether you know it or not. Um, and, um, yeah, you can just kind of overlook all the different areas here. Yeah, this is the area right there that I don't want to do going down to the base uh, but you know we will we have this cool kind of looks like the Tower of Flame in the hide but I think it's where how um, so I mean this could be the Iron Keep I guess is what they're trying to say that this is the story of the old Iron King before Vendrick and that this is what that place used to look like before it sank into the molten sea. But this is how he produced his iron, was through this kind of forge thing here. Hopefully they'll give more of a story. But we do know about the princess who loved the old Iron King, which is Princess, princess Najka. Um, but, she, but it said the old Iron King loved another. And um, so maybe that other is the one we're going to learn about. <laughs> Phew, excuse me. Um, it's kind of... It has arms like that thing inside No Man's Wharf, but I don't know. So you get some smelter wedges here, six to be precise. An iron wedge forged in this land destroys the Ashen Idol. The Ashen Idol is of great consequence to Nadalia, who having renounced her flesh, entrusts her very being to it. So this is unique in that we don't fight the Child of Dark in this game, but we do get her soul because she is not corporeal any longer. 
which I think is a nice variation on this theme so that we don't have to just like have the same DLC three times and they do it different yet a third time for Elliam Weiss, the third DLC, so. But yeah, we're on the throne floor. And it looks like there's all these gears and such. So that's what that thing looked like. By the way, that looks like dark flame, similar to Calamite's flame. If you listen carefully, you can hear what I assume is Nadalia talking. But if there's any enemies in the area, this thing gives them power. Disintegrate, and what is left is a soul of Medallia Bride of Ash. Now, this isn't a um, real soul, like, it's as a small fragment of a soul, but um, you'll get a whole bunch throughout the game, and then once you get that, they'll be the full soul. So, I, I guess I don't know if the shards and the um, you know, the full soul say something different, but it says, Soul of Na Nadalia, Bride of Ash, who renounced her flesh and wandered Broom Tower. When Nadalia came to this land, the king she sought was no longer there. Dispirited, she forsook her own soul and clung to the heirlooms of the old king. So that's interesting. I guess that's, that's a good point. So I guess the old Iron King was dead. Um, so she... Again, in, in a kind of change of the story um, from the one that was told, you know, with Fendrick and the one that was told with, you know, the forgotten king of Shulva, um, you know, they, uh, um, she came like a bit too late. Her instinct to kind of come to this place, uh, I guess this is where to go, so... Let's uh, see what this is. I don't actually remember what this is. Uh, and I guess because of that, she became like a spirit or whatever. That's a good ring. It was it used to be a good ring for me because I used to do dex characters. This is something they added here, and then they continued on in uh, um three and I like it a lot because it gets you it can you can plan your build out a lot better. An oddly deformed iron ring, dexterity that increases the dexterity. The old Iron King ruled, ruled over the great age of iron. The king's power allowed him to mold iron freely as if he held sway over the forces of life and creation. As a king does. Crazy how you can like see down all the way. I can hear someone whispering, like Nadalia. So here's our first like. Like fodder enemy. It's kind of interesting that the first fodder enemy is like a dual axe wielding uh, enemy, but you can break these and oftentimes because I assume they were people and that this is all ash like yeah that's cool we, we came up there 
Uh, I should go get that. Oh, I can't get that now. Once I get a new, no bonfire, I'll go. But I'm going to assume there's a medallia thing somewhere around here. Just because I can hear it. Doing a lot of damage, but they're, they're using a handle. Um, yeah, I guess they don't need this, and so I can do this, so I can get like a little bit more health. All right. Oh, yeah, it's in here. It's interesting. I forgot about that room. Oh, that's not the room I thought it was, actually. That's where you go fights Sarah Lon. Spoilers. Uh, we learned about Sarah Lon and the Iron Keep. Blackweed Balm, which I think is the... We got that one already. Intelligence. Okay. Scythe plus seven. I like how they just give you leveled up items because you're gonna like a zone where you know. You're in a you know leveled up zone, so you're gonna need level up items if you find them, but I don't know. Another slab just sitting out. There's some tough areas in this. There's, it's a grind for some of this, but I don't know. It's uh Yeah, so I'm gonna take care of this right away because then there's like there's a buff that they have. There, took that. There's just a guy sitting over there. More shard. satisfying to parry. Dance of Fire. Pyromancy created by the Magus Igil, loyal follower of the Old Iron King. Cast flame in a sweeping motion across the targeted area. 
The fire seems to dance and makes it victims dance with it. Have we heard about Ijo before? Because yeah, he's the he's like the right hand man to the old Iron King. It certainly looks like the name Engi too. And it is pyromancy based. This is a cool um, layout too. I mean, this this DLC is also very well designed. Not, I think the third DLC is my least favorite in terms of design. But um, yeah. That really looks suspicious, doesn't it? I love how there's like all these chains connecting everything together. these as well, which are in, they're in the Iron Keep. I mean, it's kind of weird because it makes it look like two soul vessels. That's awesome. I can try out two more builds. I guess I'm not probably going to do that. Like, it would have been cool if, like, you could see things in the distance that, like, you can't be in. Because it seems to imply that this is all of you know, broom or whatever, the area that we're in. But we were in the Iron Keep before, so I mean, you could say, like, it would be cool if we could see the Iron Keep here, but we just can't actually get to it. Or, I guess maybe this is like a big land or something, like this is, you know, there's just, there's distance between buildings? I don't know, it's, it would have been easy, <laughs> I feel, to, like, you know, just like, they do, I'm not, you know, not easy or whatever, but I'm just saying, like, to instead of making the landscape of, uh, an asset they had to make anyway, if they had to make, instead of making it, like, a barren lava land, if they put buildings all around here so that you felt like you were in, like, a, a city that was ruled by a king and that you could see where the king ruled, so it wouldn't just be like, well, where is this? Is this the Iron Keep? Is this somewhere else in the distance? Like, why isn't Adalia here rather than at, at, like, a version of the Iron Keep? I mean, and where are the subjects that they ruled over? These are interesting enemies. Okay, I forgot my thing is heavy enough that it'll set these off, but yeah, you can chase these guys and then they can go into the fire. And then explode. And as you can suspect, they, uh, you can manipulate these guys. But yeah, you can see here the bull head the same way as we saw in the Iron Keep. Um, I won't get absolutely everything in this area. I'll try my best to remember. How that guy can like fire. You can fire an arrow like over a, a thing onto you. Okay.
Got to keep my eye on the time this time this time around. Okay, let's see if we can get any of there. Nope. Small orange bird. It's kind of a weird thing for him to drop, actually, but I mean, it does protect against fire, so that's probably why he does. But like, where would they have? Where would they get a bird around here? Like, there's no light. Ooh, weird. There's no plants around here, so I just don't understand how he would have gotten a burr. Okay, he's this plus eight. <laughs> This is a little scary here, but <laughs> all right. And I believe this is a shortcut. There's that thing. More twinkling. Looks like we might be able to move these platforms at some point. There's a, uh, that's the room I think I was thinking of. Plus there's this, plus there's this. So looks like everything's like not moving. This room is just not fun. Tried my best to send those guys there to help me out. Okay, there's that drop down. In the future, these guys kind of come back to life from this state. But not this guy, sorry, just got a text. Okay. Um, yeah, let's send these guys down. They can be annoying to get to go exactly the way you'd like. I guess they're they have a blindfold on or something? Okay, I'm gonna try doing Adalia. So I can at least get far enough. Okay. Now I might run back up. I can. So that they can kind of get damaged. With those, like, is this guy gonna blow up on him? Because I've seen that guy die. Yeah. Okay. That really helps. Alright. Oh, 
bad idea. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't wanna die. Um, and I guess I will, oops, I will equip a, first of all, I will equip this and I forgot to actually equip, I guess I'll put the, uh, poison arrows here and then I'll, do I have fire arrows? And I'll use the fire arrows temporarily to, oops. I don't know why I'm trying to do this. I guess he's supposed to come on it, like here. Okay, whatever. Flame quartz ring plus three. So now here's an example of, like, so you can see one of these guys here is dead, and, um, but this guy actually comes alive here. Oh, I thought it was too handy. These guys can do some damage too, so best to not take them out of context. One second. Um, not, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> take these guys for granted is what I wanted to say. All right, so we'll grab all this stuff, more upgrade materials, which is always nice. This kind of area sucks. Oops, <laughs> I walked right into that, didn't I? These guys have rubber banding. That's probably just, oh. This part just isn't, isn't easy to deal with without just like taking out things remotely. I guess for this section I'll do this so I can actually roll. Okay. every time you kind of move forward in this area there's like a whole nother group of enemies that come up and so it just gets overwhelming in such a small area umbral dagger I think that's a pretty rare
That's a pretty rare drop. Let's read that issue. It's not get poisoned. Sharp Dagger, crafted to facilitate assassins, assassinations with a focused backstab. One, two strike with this blade and your work will be done. Okay. Careful, I don't fall off the edge there. There's a couple more guys that jump out here at you. I didn't realize they actually jump attack you. Otherwise I would have attempted to block that. That's it for this area. And this is now like the central hub of like the DLC now. There's all these different areas we can go to from here. And it kind of changes once you get things all set up for here. So I guess what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to get this item I don't want to get. Oops, that was a slow one. These guys break poise. Maybe just the. Maybe just. Um, the Shulva Sanctum Knights were more powerful or something. I don't know. Had better poise on their stuff. Because it's good that these are. There's basically an area here where you constantly get cursed and you cannot defeat this invader before he runs down and so you basically just like I'm pretty sure you can't defeat him. This would be great if I could do this. Nice. Oh, you. Because then he goes and he heals. That's why I hate this. Uh, this is not the way I want to do this at all. Because he just... Oh. Don't heal. Oh, gosh. Oh. I almost got him too, I've never even got him close.
focus because I'm always a filthy dex. And I don't ever do a lot of damage. Oh, God, I hate him so much. Ugh. Just a waste of time. Ugh. Oh, my God. about as close a call as I've ever had. I guess what I should wear here is the ring of binding so that I um, don't like hollow as much. And there's a Nibdalia thing. Oh my god. Oh, he keeps coming back to life. I guess I could also be doing this. Just to kind of like... I guess the first thing I should do is go down and try to get Nadalia, because that's permanent. There she is. Oh, come on. Oh my god. Does that take care of the, the curse too? Okay. So hopefully that makes it to this guy. Oh, I hate that move and I always forget it. Okay, now you're gonna follow me. Oh my. Oh. So does that mean that I can't get that soul of Nadalia now? Or does that mean that this it starts up again? <sighs> I just don't like this part at all.
Oh, <laughs> that's it? Okay. Just don't walk on them. Alright. Um, at least these guys are... Okay, one guy fell, which is good. At least these guys are dying now. I guess that's the key thing. Just go down and take that out, and then you can just take your time with this. It still is it's a bit nasty. Okay, I have to get that. I said I'd get that item back in the f first part, but I haven't. Oh! have this guy come up, I think, if I can. I wonder if you can get this bow. And he has. If that's just a great bow, like the destructive great arrows, use it. He not get poisoned. Doesn't look like he gets poisoned. Okay. He's gonna run at me. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Keeps going down lower. Oh, he's so annoying. Oh, God. Okay. Good. And then this is still here. <laughs> All right. Because there's still guys down here, I believe. But there's an item worth getting in here, so this is all important. <laughs> Don't just die right here then. God. Alright, let's see here.
Majestic Greatsword. Ancient great sword of unknown origin, this sword was passed down through generations until it reached Gordon, wandering knight of Ferosa, and was lost upon his death. Uncannily, every last one of the prominent swordsmen who inherited this weapon was left handed. How do you do the leap arm? I guess it's probably that's a cool one. Maybe you just do Huh. I thought there was one where you did the leap. Oh it's probably um uh, that then So anyway, it's Artorias' great sword. Long story short, that's Artorias's. And it said that it was got um, picked up by someone who was from Ferosa. I mean, it passed through many hands, but then it landed with the guy from Ferosa. And to me, I believe that that might be some indication about where Ferosa is. That was really stupid. In other words, Ferosa might be during like, or ha ha ha, Farosa might be, um, uh, Ulusil or Lordran, whichever you like. Oh, a long great bow. Is that then the bow that is being used by those guys? Unique bow equipped by long knights. This very powerful bow uses great arrows, but each draw of the string requires a great deal of time, leaving the shooter vulnerable. In the heyday of this land, the old Iron King fancied entertaining dubious and eccentric guests. We knew about this, most of them charlatans, but among the riffraff was an unusual knight from the Far East. He trained the Iron King's men in the sword and obeisance of to his new lord. So, yeah, that's just the knight, that's just the um, bow that the Law Knights used that was not available in the base game. But apparently, I would, I would, if I had to guess, if I was a betting man, that assassin guy was like a, a roaming traveler or whatever and was searching for the notorious sword. I guess he was an assassin though. I was initially kind of just thinking he was a traveler, but I guess it doesn't say assassin, so... Alright, well with that all out of the way, um, I think we're gonna call it an episode here and we'll just start um, from this point and moving through the DLC. Spell Quartz. I feel like this is a... Oh! That dark... Dark Deities 
thing for the, the clutch ring. I guess that's a claw of a crow or something. So the design suggests one of the darker deities. Uh huh. Okay, interesting. Um, what is this? This is just a rando. Gordis. Okay. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this episode, and we'll continue with Broom Tower in next episode. Bye.